Well, welcome to the Speak With People podcast. My name is Jason Rates. I am so excited you are joining us today. Just as a reminder, this podcast exists because we believe words matter and we believe healthy communication is oxygen for your relationships and your leadership. So whether you communicate one-on-one, -on, -one, on a team, from a stage or from behind a screen, healthy communication is so incredibly important. So we hope this podcast episode encourages you, it challenges you to grow, to elevate the importance of healthy communication in your life because we know that it will change your world when you do. Well, jumping into the day, have you ever noticed that there is just nothing quite like generosity to give somebody hope? There are so many YouTube videos, especially with influencers like Mr. Beast, who, who just kind of flooded onto the scene with these ridiculous, you know, and crazy and irrational random acts of kindness and hope and joy. And it's just been absolutely amazing to experience. There's just nothing like generosity that just fills people up, gives them hope, gives them a new lease on life. Well, Here's a question. Why aren't more people generous? Why aren't more people, why aren't more organizations generous? Is it really as life changing as it seems? How can we live a generous life? How can we tell the stories of our generosity? Well, that's what we're diving in today with Shay Prisk. He is the pastor of Grumlaw Church in the great state of Michigan. Just an absolute, uh, incredible, incredible communicator, incredible leader, and Better than all of that, he's genuine. I think he's one of the most brilliant leaders I've been around, but he's just, he's so real and you're going to just learn a ton from this. So Shay, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to myself. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. I'm so glad you're on. <laughs> hey, before we hop into the, the material, the content, the conversation, could you just give us a little bit more into your, your story, who you are? what you're about, all those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. So as you mentioned, uh, yeah, I'm the pastor of a church up here in Michigan called Grumlaw Church. Uh, probably, I think we probably hold the title. It's like the strangest name for a church, period. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, we uh, we have two campuses, one in Grand Blanc, Michigan, and then one in Heartland, Michigan. Um, I've been, uh, we planted this church back in January of 2018. Just a little bit more about me prior to that. I was in medical sales. Uh, so probably kind of like your less traditional route to uh, mm. becoming a pastor. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having the time of my life doing what I genuinely feel like God has designed me to do, what he knit me together to do in, in my mother's womb. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. I love that. Well, let's just hop in with the conversation as we kind of just kind of center in on generosity and communicating it. Why do you think generation uh, gen generosity is just so important and and why it why does it bring so much hope does it bring the same amount of hope to the giver and the receiver just love to pick your brain on that yeah you know one of the it, it sounds like kind of a, a a cute phrase that we maybe use but I, I really do believe it to my core right we, we, we say something we say all the time around our church uh, is we never look more like Jesus than when we are being generous mm. um you know, Jesus gave obviously everything up to and including his life. And uh, so I, I think it's the the closest resemblance we'll have to Jesus, this side of heaven. Mm. And um, anybody that would push back on that, I would kind of like challenge them with like, then why why do you get roped into 15 YouTube videos of somebody just giving $100 bills away? Like, what is it about that that, right. that captures our attention? Um, and, and it's interesting, like, we love gen like I've never met anyone that is like, you know what? I'm for stinginess or I, I don't I like it when people like hold their their wallets with a tight grip. But um, as you even kind of alluded to, it's it's often something that you know, we don't see it as often as we probably ought to. And uh, my research, my uh, I don't know, thought on this, and I've given it certainly a lot of thought is that I, I think that's largely a, a first world thing mm. that. You know, we 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 hold on to our money in a way that uh, because we have so much of it. And ironically, go to third world countries, people have less and they're more willing to give it away. So it's kind of ironic in that. Um, so, yeah, so I, it, I, I think because of our consumeristic society, it's really hard for us to get to that point. But once we can break that spirit of greed inside of ourselves, um, it's very rare you see somebody begin to live out generosity and then 
uh, go back to living stingy, even in the face of like massive right. like pay cuts and you know downsizing homes, all these types of things. That they still end up, they tend to continue to lean into that no matter what their future holds. So uh, I think once God can get a hold of our hearts in that way, it just becomes kind of that snowball effect. Mm. That's so yeah. important. That's so incredibly true. So there's this word out there, the words irrational. Sometimes when we use the word irrational, it's kind of in a negative, uh, you know, connotation. But w- honestly, when I think of you, uh, you know, I, and I had the privilege of kind of being on your team, your, you know, your management team as you launched the church and kind of were getting going. Yeah. I mean, from the very beginning, you guys just from like, even from the outside looking in, I mean, you guys were so generous as an organization. Like some people could say they are like irrationally generous. Like why they're yeah. brand new. Why are they giving, you know, so much away? Like so many, I think so many people probably watched your story and were scratching their heads. Like, you yeah. know, what do you, what do you think about that kind of, I mean, there's probably those levels of generosity, but mm-hmm. you know, when you get to that, like irrational level, you know, how do yeah. you, how do you get there and communicate that? Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting that you bring that up, Jason. Like we got a lot of pushback for that in the early days because it was kind of interesting. Like people like you, you were good with it, but there were other organizations literally were like, Hey, we're not going to, you're in this unique place where you're saying, Hey. Would you consider supporting us? And then usually a follow-up question at some point is, well, can we see your budget? <laughs> and they right. see, you know, at, no questions about any of the other stuff we're doing, how much we're spending on marketing or like, you know, sound systems, whatever. They're like, hey, can we talk about this line item where you, you are going to try to give away this amount of money in your first year? How can you, and I heard this a lot, mm. how, how can you in good faith give away those sums of money when you're requiring organizations like us to give you money to even survive. And uh, my mentality with that was always like, I don't think generosity is a switch. Again, almost back to what we were initially saying, like that you can flip on and off at will. Um, When generosity grabs a hold of your heart, it's got it. And conversely, wow, you know, if it doesn't have a hold of your heart, it it just doesn't. And 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 it shows itself out. And so I was like, I'm trying to protect myself from myself, frankly, in a lot of ways. Yep. I think if we decide to flip that switch on in year three, or at least that's what we uh, we tell ourselves, I think we'll get to year three and we won't do it because we will have talked ourselves into using that money in other areas and we will tell ourselves that we can't afford it. So yep. we are going to take a step of faith right now in that direction, even if it looks irrational to people, even if even if it causes some people to withhold funding for us in these early days, we don't care. We We, we trust in the God who, you know, can do anything he wants and he certainly isn't freaking out about a hundred thousand dollars so right um yeah we just you know we walked into that just completely in faith but um you know i mean there's a lot that kind of went to that point i would say primarily just parents that i saw model that my entire life yeah that were crazy generous and then god always ended up coming through and then you know for me like as a churchgoer for the first part of my adult life it never sat well with me if we were saying hey would you, will you consider giving to this organization? But then that organization wasn't modeling that um, particularly well. So we just said from day one, here are some kind of baselines that we are going to put in place and for no yep. other reason, just to protect ourselves from the power of greed. Yep. And we've continued modeling that. And frankly, wow. it just builds your faith, Jason, right? Because when wow. you give, you end up seeing God come through. And as you see God come through, the next time he asks you to take a bigger step, you're, you're willing to say that. And that, that's not even unique to generosity. That's just called faith. Like right. you take a step of obedience, God comes through the next time he tells you to take a little bit, like an incrementally bigger step. And you end up taking that one because you saw him come through. You have like the, the, the faith of what he just did and how he just came through previously. And so, you know, now we're looking as a church, like every year we've increased that percentage that we've given away and we're, we've never been in a healthier financial position than we are as we sit today. So wow. it's like, I don't want this to tread to like your listeners to like, this is prosperity gospel. And there's a fine line there. Yeah, but yeah. one of me and one of my mentors joke around about is like, at the same time, when your heart's in the right place, and like whether it's an organization or an individual or a family, yeah. when people are, are giving recklessly, uh, when people are giving irrationally, it's hard, you're hard pressed not to like, if you ask them just a couple of questions. They have story after story after story that is like, there's no other way to describe it. It's miraculous. Like we yep. can't outgive our crazy generous God. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I love that. 
There's so many clips right there that we're going to make in the reels because you said so many, so many rich things about generosity, especially about it's just not this flip that you switch on and off. Like you want, once you figure it out, oh my goodness, your life, it, it just exudes, it comes out of you. And you're always looking through that lens of how can I bless other people? How can we do it? I, I loved watching, you know, from the outside those early years because, you know, so many people lead organizations and the older the organization is, they just get tighter, right? Their hands get clenched yeah. and they're like, well, of course you got to pay for the electricity or you got to pay for the marketing. You got to pay for those things. But that's why I love, like, I'm just so fascinated by Mr. Beast, you know, 130 million mm -hmm. YouTube subscribers, you know, all that kind of stuff. But his very first, you know, advertiser that came to him was like, I want to give you $5,000 you know, to be, uh, you know, a sponsored ad. And he's like, how about you give me 10 and I'm just going to do a video of giving it away, <laughs> you know, like from the get go, <laughs> he just had that, you know, thought process. And yeah, obviously he has some motives about, you know, views and all that kind of stuff. But you're, you're right. When you talked about all those YouTube videos where people are just giving away, it just pulls on our heartstrings because yeah. it just lifts, it just lifts people up. I mean, it's just absolutely so incredible. And, and that's true of us as well. I mean, we we think we have some pretty good like media that we put out, but by far our highest viewed videos are always the ones that tell stories of generosity, whether we're paying medical debt, whether we're coming alongside another organization. It has a unique ability to grab people's attention, uh, whether they're for or against Jesus. Right. And, um, you know, it, and, and that's like we we said that from day one. We said more than anything else, we want to be known for our generosity. That yeah. even if a person says, I will never walk through the doors of that church, that Grumla place, they, they have a hard time saying negative things specifically about us because they're like, gosh, dang it, the good they do in this community and how they give to this community is just kind of undeniable. Uh, e even I, as maybe an atheist, as somebody who's completely diametrically opposed to Christianity, it, it's hard to have negative things to say about them. And so, yep. um, we yeah, we've just wow. tried to, you know, kind of carry that mantle forward. And uh, God's been really, really great and really honoring and really kind in that. What was, uh, take us back, tell us maybe the story of like one of your first kind of bigger gives, you know, when you, you were in, like in a room, your team's all trying to figure something out and you know, mm. the light bulb came on and you're like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Can we really do that? Yeah. Like, yeah, there's been a couple like that, Jason, like the one that the, probably the one we got the most notoriety because like news outlets got a hold of it is we, we paid off, um, and this is going to sound more grandiose and I, I will explain, but we, we, we paid off, I think it was like $2.5 million in medical debt. Wow. Now it's done through an organization that you basically buy the debt for pennies on the dollar. I think there's probably more of these organizations out sure. there now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, anyway, so, you know, all these people basically got letters mail saying, Hey, your debt's forgiven. And uh, courtesy of, you know, this random church that, you know, you've probably never walked through the doors before. And, uh, that, that was that we did that. Uh, that was our first Christmas that we did that. So we would have been just under a year into it. And uh, for us, it was tens of thousands of dollars, not millions of dollars that we actually ended up paying to purchase that debt. But nonetheless, it was like it was definitely an act of obedience. I remember the first Easter that we had um, where I was feeling this nudge like we were supposed to give the entire in-person offering away to help other churches start. And again, you as a guy who has worked in the church world, Easter and Christmas are usually your biggest offerings of the year. And actually, for whatever reason, for us, Easter has always been the bigger one. And so that was one of those like kind of huh! moments like, God, you sure? You sure you want to you want to change your mind? And we did it. And the ironic thing, now, now we every year we give our, our Easter, we've never kept an Easter offering actually in the history of our church. Because he asked us to do it the first one. And wow. every year we've given away, so, you know, and I'd love to tell you that in the subsequent ones, it's been, like, oh, it's taking this big step of faith. It's just so automatic. And what's so cool about that, Jason, is like how it catches on. Like people just assume and how that's infiltrated through even the culture of our staff and the leadership of our church. Like they're surprised when we have some event, Christmas, Easter, church event, and there isn't some massive generosity thing <laughs> attached to it. And, right. and it's funny, like I used to be the one trying to talk people into like, hey, I think this is okay. And talking elder teams into this stuff. And now they're the ones like, well, are we going to get, I'm like, well, I didn't think we were going to do that. I don't know. Maybe we ought to pray about that. And they're like, well, we just kind of assumed. And so here they are kind of like, they're, they're stretching my, you know, my faith as well. And, you know, I, I'd say the biggest, um, you know, one of the things we say a, a lot um, is from a generosity standpoint, if, 
if it's not making you uncomfortable, the amount of you're giving, whether you're an individual, whether you're a family, an organization, if it's not making you uncomfortable, you're probably not giving enough. Um, and you, you, you ought to be giving to a point or to a level where if God doesn't come through, you're actually in trouble. Um, right. I, I don't know if I can say this. Sorry. I, I usually say from our state, you're screwed if God doesn't, you know, come through. <laughs> and, um, and what's interesting is only Americans, I shouldn't say Americans, third, you know, first world countries, but our, my context is obviously America. Only Americans have a hard time doing that. We yeah. have to work really, 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 really hard to make ourselves uncomfortable from a financial standpoint. Because the reality is, and again, like, let's throw each other under the bus here. Like, how many times have we really done that in our lives? We've given such an extraordinary gift personal or as a family that, that it's caused you to actually like skip a vacation. You're right. like, we literally can't go out to eat for the next three months. Like we don't, we usually give out of our abundance. And so um, I, t I say that like when we uh, adopted our second campus, um, we had had this mentality at that point, you know, for years. And we are now adopting an organization that was twice the size of us, more mm. than twice the budget of ours. And while they were being generous, it, it, it wasn't proportionally speaking at the same level. And I remember that elder meeting and it was like, you know, it's a little like, you know, it, it was probably more of an argument by the end of it. And I said, I would rather bury this place financially because we gave so much money away. I can, I can stand in front of hundreds of people and deliver that message a whole lot better than I can, you know, two years down the road. Well, we did our best. We tried to yep. scrape on by and we made all these budget cuts and we did this, 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 this but we still don't have enough. So we got to make this, you know, drastic step. We got to cover hand of our staff. We got to sell this building, whatever it might be. I, I just said, I think God's going to honor it. Now that was probably the biggest financial step of obedience that we've ever taken because you talk about flipping a switch on. That mm -hmm. is what happened. We went, wow. we're flipping it on full steam ahead, both organizations. We're bringing them together. We're operating as one. I would never tell a married couple, keep your finances separate. We're bringing your finances together as these two organizations were operating as one church and we're going all in from day one. And it was a scary eight months where wow. we were running a deficit because we were giving so much money away. But the awesome thing is, Jason, again, like what we've been talking about here, it, it, it slowly but surely it caught on. Yep. People started giving in ways that we had never seen before. The second campus, we saw people give that had literally never given before. And what I say is like they hadn't been given a reason to give yet because generosity is contagious in that way. You see it and you see it constantly celebrated. Eventually, you just kind of look at yourself in the mirror and like, all right, am I a dirt ball? Am I going to get on board for this? Like, do, do <laughs> right. I do I really am I going to sit there and cheer another time in the seat while I continue to like hold my wallet with a vice grip? Right. Like, it's time for me to get on this. And God flipped the script. I remember we were almost to D-Day where we said like drastic decisions are going to have to be made. And it was like no sooner did we say that uh, things began to turn around. And like I can honestly wow. tell you now that we're, we're in the wow. healthiest financial position we've ever wow. been in and we're given more money than we ever have. Well, it's yeah. just that that inspiration process, you know, I mean, that's that's why the power of story is everything, you know, I mean, yeah. I think about as a, as my childhood as a, as a young kid, you know, I I it it was normal to me that my parents, I watched them give at church, and then it was normal yep. to me that they, we served our neighbors and they gave, you know, it was just, it was just this you know normal thought process. But for some people who didn't have that, now they're coming to be a part of this organization, this church, and now they're hearing these stories, and they're getting inspired, you know, and it may not happen right away, mm -hmm. but eventually that flip gets switched, and they're like. How, how have I been missing out on this? Yep. You know, and yep. it just, that's, and I think that's why we need to tell the stories. And I think sometimes, especially, you know, I mean, churches, right? Faith-based, you know, 501c3 nonprofits. And then there's lots of other nonprofits, you know, there's hospital nonprofits yep. and there's colleges and there's, you know, uh, parachurch ministries and all these kind of nonprofits. It seems to be churches are like the only ones that don't really tell the story of, generosity or they, they don't talk about it as much because, well, nobody wants to talk about money in church, but all these other mm -hmm. story, all these other organizations are telling the story. And that's why I love, you know, just the inspiration that comes through, like when a church covers the medical debt or, you know, those kind of things. Cause it, it's, it, it just gives such great fuel to the, the, the church member or the person who's like, you guys are going to believe this. Like my church, this is what happened. 
you know, and they could say that in their workplace. They could say that in their neighborhood. And so, you know, that generosity yeah, really does inspire true. people uh, to be able to do yeah. that. It's just, yeah. This, and you're right. And it provides those, it provides those end roads for people to like, actually, you know, that might be a little bit more reticent uh, in talking about their church. It gives them an opportunity to do so in a way that they previously probably wouldn't have pounced upon because again, right. it's yeah. Generosity right. just tends to break down those, those barriers for sure. And yeah. We got to stay away from, you know, doing it in the wrong way and being humble and all of those kind of things. But you know, it's, it's, it's just this incredible process, you know, just to brag on you for a second, but one of the things that I love about you is that you you model this. I mean, I, I've been around leaders who we have all have, and I've been there in my life at times where you say one thing, but then if somebody really were to peer inside your life, it'd be like, oh, okay, this guy really doesn't believe it. But a bunch of years ago, you know, one of our kids was going through just a, a hellish couple of years with just some, mm. some I mean, it was just, it was just hell. And we didn't know what to do. We found some treatment. The treatment cost a ton of money. And so we're like, oh, okay, do we do this? And so we got on Facebook and we just asked the Facebook community, hey, would you help? And it was like not even like five minutes into it being posted, you called me and you're like, hey, depending on how this thing goes, like, just let me know, like, let me know where it ends because we want to, we want to help. It was just like from the get go. And so that, that's what I've just appreciated from mm -hmm. you, knowing you all these years, you know, your heart really does back it up. And the story was amazing. I mean, literally within hours, the entire thing was fundraised. We were able to go get the treatment. And if you met my son now, yeah. you would go, is, is this the same? Is this the same guy? Like it, <laughs> it, it, it was just amazing. It's just, it's just me. Yeah. Do, you have, do you have any um, favorite generosity moments, either personally or from an organization that like you just really look forward to, or, or maybe one of those quiet ones that nobody knows about, but maybe you'll give like mm. us a little peek into it. Yeah. You know, um, it's funny, yeah, that we're recording this right now. We're in the process right now, and this is kind of like on the DL because we're trying to keep like the church's name out of it. But we're in the process right now of opening uh, my wife and I a coffee shop uh, about half a mile down the road from one of our campuses that um, we're giving away 100% of the proceeds to fight human trafficking. Wow. And um, and so I'll never make a nickel on it. You know, n nobody's ever getting rich off this thing. And uh, anyone that has attempted to build anything in the last two years, uh, you know that construction costs are out of control and whatever you got quoted at, you might as well put a times three next to it. And uh, it's been like, if I'm honest, Jason, it's been the most financially stressful <laughs> thing I've ever walked through. And uh, yeah, oh. super vulnerable moment. It was a week and a half ago. I was uh, at my computer messing with some QuickBooks stuff and, you know, uh, I had a bill on my desk. Um that, I, that had to be paid for some work that was done. It was significantly more than what we were quoted at. And uh, I, I don't get this emotional about it normally, but there literally a tear ran down my cheek and it wasn't a tear of like, God's going to do such great things. It was a tear of like, freaking A, where's this money going to come from? Like, <laughs> and uh, and my wife kind of looked at me and she was like, what are you going to do? And I just I just paid it uh, out of our, you know, our savings account, which I had done that quite a few times by that point. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And... So the next day, you know, I got a really, you know, my wife said, how you doing? And I said, I'm a little bit stressed. And she said, hey, just so you remember, you're the one that tells everybody all the time you ought to give in a way that makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> you and I are officially uncomfortable. So we're just kind of practicing what we preach, aren't we? <laughs> and what was crazy, Jason, is like I just said to you, and it really, like then I had this P to do this. Do I think that, that he's here to sabotage it at the 11th hour? Of course not. Right. And, you know, I knew that God won. I know that God wants to use this to help these women from being trafficked, but it's all the, the other things. Like, I didn't know that God wanted to teach me stuff in this. I probably should have figured as much, but like, <laughs> like I, 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 I probably right there again, a person that I, I'd like to think, you know, most people would say, Hey, you're living out the generosity thing pretty well. God was like, no, no, no. You still got some stuff to learn there, home slice. You're not as generous as you think. Yep. And, um, and it, it was a really sobering, humbling moment wow. where I, and I've told people, I've only told this to like two people now, um, but you know, I, I, I've, those that I have recounted this with, I said, this is a little embarrassing to admit. I think this might be the first time where we have given so much money away as a family unit, where we went, there will be pretty drastic sacrifices we have to make here in the coming months and year. Yep. And 
And my wife, again, as we continue to, you know, unpack that, she's like, so we don't get to go on vacation this year. Who gives a rip? Like, we eventually get to spend eternity with Jesus. We're not going to care whether we got to go to, like, Florida this year or not. And so um, it was one of those moments where, although, like, <laughs> like <laughs> felt, mm -hmm. felt brutal in the moment, mm -hmm. uh, I'm really thankful for it already. And I'm only, like, you know, a week and a half removed from that. So. I love that. I love that. Well, tell your wife. You you can come down to Florida anytime. We'll house you because we have a big giant go. house. We have a ton of we have a ton of kids, you know. But it would be one big happy uh, happy kind of thing. But yeah, you're so right. Like it, it's it's amazing when we get into the reality of where we're like, okay, if this is really what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, God's gonna provide, and you know, to take that step. But you know, you just keep growing. You know, in that step. I can remember when we planted Thrive Church. Uh, I mean, however many, almost ten years ago in central Michigan. And, you know, those early days, like we didn't have much, you know, uh, but we had a retirement that we had been building and, you know, yeah, we just, I remember the morning where I'm like, Tracy, I think this needs to, we just need to cash this out. I know we're going to lose a bunch of money, but this is the the most that we can contribute to this. And, you know, to this day, you, you know what planning a church is like. Your whole life goes into it. I mean, it, yeah. now that I'm on this end now of starting a, a small business, like it feels a little similar, um, yeah, a little similar, you know, not the same, but it's just that, you know, that thought process of, okay, like I'm, I'm going to be okay and I'm going to be able to do this. And what do you have any advice for parents? So we want to raise, you know, generous kids. We want to mm -hmm. model it. You know, you talked about how in, a, in your childhood, it was modeled to you. I mean, do you have any any advice on, you know, okay, hey, mom and dad's, stepmom and dad's, you know, here are, here are some just things to be, you know, aware of, or here are some things that you guys could be doing as a family to just build this generosity culture and value in, in what yeah. you do as a family. Yeah, I think more than anything, Jason, like, I don't think we need to overthink it, but, you know, involve your kids in those conversations. Let them know, like, I think sometimes we, we try to shelter our kids because we're like, oh, we don't want to stress our kids out. And there's a line there, obviously. You don't want to tell your, you know, seven-year-old, like, you might not be able to eat this week. Like, that's probably not smart. But, uh, yeah. you know, at the same time, like, hey, you might remember last year we took a vacation at this time. We're not this year because remember uh, at Christmas, the church did this big offering thing and we ended up, you know, mom and dad ended up giving a pretty big gift. And so we're not going this year. So you know, that these people will rescued from whatever, this, you know, that thing. And so I think one, just a communication piece, like showing your kids, like, yeah. Hey, here's, here's the reality of it. But you no, know, I, I think the most, like, there's a reason, you know, a lot of people don't know this money finances are the second most popular topic in, in the entire Bible. Uh, mm -hmm. the only one that takes more, uh, that is only spoken about more is specifically the word sin. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, you know, one right. of two, not, yeah, you know, so it, it so we, th there's so much attention that's paid to it. But then when you think about how much of like a conversation with a child, for instance, that, you know, parents are doing that, it's, it's usually lacking. You know, we, we give a hard time to like schools, they're teaching kids chemistry, but they're like, why don't we teach them how to like manage their finances? But, I, you know, I would look at that and say, no, that's kind of on parents to do. And unfortunately, a lot of parents are taking that step with their kids. And so you know, my dad was really intentional with me about like setting up a budget with me at a, at a very young age. When I first got my, you know, my first job, you know, we, we walked through the, the principle that I've lived by now for my entire adult life is give, save, live, give, mm. save, live, give, save, live, give, save, live. So we give the very first thing we do when we get paid is we give 10% away. We save another 10% and then you live off the 80%. If every one of the listeners just took that one principle to heart, they yep. would not have another financial problem for the rest of their lives. Mm. Um, but it begins with the tithe. Of, and so even my dad, like I look back and at the time I'm like, you know, I just thought it was my dad being generous, but I, I think it had more to do with the fact that he was trying to teach me those life lessons, you know, yep. randomly. It might be one year. He, he wouldn't pay me five bucks to shovel the driveway. Heck no, I'm his kid. That's just part of the job, dude. Like that, you, you go do it. But there might be another time where he slips me $5 or, you know, you know, for the sake of round numbers, you get, you know, whatever it might be. And he, he would take, he would not pay me in a $5 bill. He'd pay me in singles. He'd be like, this one you are giving to church on Sunday, you know? Huh. And then he would take this one. We're going to go deposit in your bank account together. These yep. three are the ones that you get to go spend. Uh, yep. That's a terrible analogy because my math was wrong right there. But anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so he would literally take me to the bank and deposit a dollar. Like no joke into my bank account. 
And I think when I finally cashed that thing out, there was like 110 bucks in there, you know, like was hardly any money. He, and, and that Sunday, before we would go to church, he would say, hey, do you have your dollar? You bet. And I was excited about it. I was like, sweet. I get, I get to be like the adults and actually drop a little something in there. Yep. And uh, so I think if, you know, if there's one very practical lesson, and we begin to practice this even with our kids, um, you know, my, my grandmother, or usually it's like an aunt, sends them 20 bucks in the mail. It's annoying. I'll drive to, you know, the, or I'll go up to the gas station and I'll, I'll get that money back and singles, you know, five, 10, you know, some singles. And I'll walk and I'll be like, and you guys get to bring this to church on Sunday. And it's already catching on. My kids are six, five and three. They did an offering this year for uh, in, back in kids ministry for a specific cause. And my daughter came back. And she's like, dad, can I get money out of my piggy bank and give some money to this thing? Like she wanted to give to it. And I think a lot of kids might have had that reaction. But I'd like to think that there's at least a small piece of that played and that one, we're, we're telling our kids about generous things that we're doing. Yep. And additionally, we've, we've been you know already implementing that principle because I want by the time that they're making these decisions for themselves, I want this to be second nature, like it was for me. I right. never crossed my mind, even as a high school rebellious son of a gun, yep. not following Jesus whatsoever, I still tie because yep. it was just like so in my DNA. And it's way easier to teach it to our kids when they're young than to try to get a 40-year-old dude to, to start giving. That yeah. is, that's hard. It, it's a lot so. easier to, to get them when they're young. So that's a, it's very a very, so. very good question and something I think that every parent should be super intentional about. Ah, uh, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, I love, I love that intentionality. So as we kind of wrap up the conversation, you know, kind of speak to uh, other leaders who are leading an organization or maybe, you know, they're pastoring a church or they're running a small business, you know, and they're, they're working on their budget. And, you know, you talked to them in the very beginning about that line item about generosity, you know, yeah. e encourage them. Like maybe they're on the fence about having that type of, of, yeah. of line item. You know, what would you say to them? Uh, I would steal the words from Shia LaBeouf. Do it, do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, yeah, I, I would say it, it's, what we typically, and again, this isn't even unique to organizations. Or, you know, this is true of everyone. We always, and this is like classic Christianity, we wait for that special moment where like there's a light that beams down from heaven. It hits the side of our face and we go, yep. and God's like, it's time to begin. It's not coming. You're waiting for it to feel uncomfortable. In fact, people love to throw the verse, God loves a cheerful giver. It's like, <laughs> I don't know anybody that's been all that cheerful the first time around. It's just like, you just kind of got to get over yourself and do it. Yep. And uh, so, it, yeah, if I can encourage anyone who's listening right now, it, it just just take that step. And again, um, for us, what that looked like, we were asking, we, I believe that the tide starts at 10 percent. It was never meant to be the finish line. It was supposed to be, be the starting point. And so we as an organization started at 11 percent. Call me a weirdo. I was just like, we're asking everybody to do 10. We're going to do 1 percent better than them, at least initially. <laughs> And uh, so for us, that looks like 11% of the line item where it was that we, we have since day one given 11% to help start more churches. So 11% still to this day automatically goes to church planning. And what I say to people all the time is something I've actually already said in this conversation is it's to protect us from greed. It's to protect me from me. I know what the spirit is inside of me. And it's to hold on with a tight grip, hoard more for myself, keep it for myself. You're going to be able to go farther faster if you don't give all the stupid money away. Mm. Um, that is literally a, it's literally in our bylaws. Like it, it, we couldn't change it legally if we wanted to. And so if you're leading an organization, whether it's a Christian organization or not, my encouragement would be one, pick a percentage. Don't pick a dollar amount. Um, percentages communicate there's a plan. Mm. Dollar amounts are conscience cleansers. You, you give it because you listen to this podcast and you're like, oh man, I haven't been doing much. I'm going to slip 20 bucks in the offering plate. I'd say, oh man. Our company used right. to give money away. All right, we're going to write a $100 check right now. No, no, no. That's no plan with that. It's like, I tell people all the time, the American Red Cross, when they do some big pledge, you think it's only Christians given to that? There's tons of people that are throwing tips and that sort of thing. Christians ought to be leading the charge with planned Absolutely. giving, meaning that, again, we there was forethought that went into it. There was a look that went back between you know the executives on the board, between a, a, a husband and wife that went, are we actually going to do this right now? Like for real, we're going to go for this? Like one of those types of moments and then just go for it and, uh, and, and don't look back. And, and honestly, the crazy thing is, it, God, he normally doesn't even make us sweat it. It's like we're 30 minutes on the other side of this decision and he's already done something crazy. We're one week later 
And right. it's like, oh my gosh, can you believe we withheld this? Like it, it's so I, I would say take the leap and uh, you'll see God come through, honestly, a lot faster than you would have even anticipated. That's so, right. Do, oh, it. That's so do good. it, do it, do it, and pick a percentage. Yeah. That's so good. Well, thank you for that. I mean, that's, you know, so incredibly helpful and so inspiring. Before we wrap up, I just thought we'd, you know, ask you a couple of rapid fire questions. Our audience can kind of keep, you know, keep getting to know you. If you're a podcast listener, do you have a favorite podcast right now? Is there one that you've kind of gone to, you know, to kind of gain some insight, all that kind of stuff? I'll give you a, I'll give you a spiritual one and my guilty pleasure one. So uh, my spiritual one, there's a, a preacher named John Tyson, who is oh, yeah. in uh, New York City. Uh, he is my favorite man, man crush right now. My favorite <laughs> preacher at this particular moment. I pretty, uh, I, I listen to him uh, just about weekly. And that accent, um, Jing- I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, that that's it's true. Those Australians have an unfair advantage that's over right. us Americans who suddenly <laughs> sound very dumb when we speak after listening to an Australian guy for a while. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, you know, and I listen to, you know, like from a leadership standpoint, a lot of the ones I'm sure you're listening to are already listened to the Craig Rochelle leadership podcast, you know, the uh, Carrie Newhoff podcast are both like really, really good ones. Um, and then my guilty, I, I'm a sports fan. So I listen mm. to my one, uh, it's called the BS Report. There's a guy named Bill Simmons. I can't, I probably even shouldn't recommend it because he curses and stuff sometimes, oh, but sorry. He, <laughs> it's the, uh, he's, uh, he, I, that, that's my, that's my guilty sports podcast that I still listen to every week. I love it. I love it. Uh, either read or listen. Was there a, a book from 2022 that just, you know, was like, oh my goodness, yeah, I got to yeah. pass this book on. Uh, yeah, there, there was, there's two books. One of them I felt like I missed the boat on. And then the other one is a, is a newer one. Uh, both of them would fall in my top five books I've ever read. And I, I, I try to be a pretty ferocious reader. Uh, the first one was Live Blocked by John Mark Kohler. He wrote another book called Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, which is a really, really, really good book as well. But uh, I, I like Live No Lies even more. Um, mm. If that is not a book that you have read yet, like stop what you're doing, buy that thing. It'll, it'll rock your world in a very, very good way. Uh, and then uh, I read a book, and it's one that's been on my bookshelf for just I don't know, whoever gets me. Thank you, uh, because I should have read it a long time ago. Uh, called the Barbarian Way by Erwin Manus. Oh yeah, and that thing was oh, <laughs> I mean, it taught me things that I I, I, I read most. I actually read most of it on a beach, ironically, in Florida with my wife. I read it in like a two day period, and there's watermarks all over it, not from the ocean, <laughs> but from tears. It was wow. so thinking good. So. Those are two of the best books I've read in a long time, period. But it just so happened to fall this last year. Yeah, that's awesome. And then, you know, last question, uh, your hunter what was one of your favorite places to hunt on the planet. Ooh, you know, Africa holds a, a unique place. I mean, this is I, I know this is some on video here. Here's my office that, you know, I don't show all these things to here we go. Like, yeah, there's lots of stuff here on my walls. Um yeah, uh, yeah, probably Tanzania specifically in Africa. Wow. It's just, you know, like the animals, even how they react. And I'm like, gosh, they're just kind of standing there. They just, they want to get shot. And they're uh, <laughs> they're like, no, those animals have never seen a human being before. They're as wow. curious as you are. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's a different way. You just, you feel wow. like you're in the middle of Africa, which you are. <laughs> yeah, so those are, uh, yeah, Tanzania wow. was a beautiful, if you ever get the opportunity to go to Africa and just it, if you if you don't believe there's a god go to Africa and spend about 5 minutes on a safari and it's it's just uh, it's breathtaking wow. it's incredible wow yeah. well shay i can't thank you enough for being a part of today's podcast i mean i i personally have been so blessed by you know your friendship and leadership over the years and just can't thank you for pouring out some of that to our listeners if people want to get more information about you where should they go online to find that yeah, uh, you can learn. Yeah, I, I don't have like a personal website or anything, but I preach just about every week. Uh, Grumlaw.com. That's G-R-U-M-L-A-W.com. Uh, we post all of our messages there and uh, any content would be there through our social media channels. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Shay, for being on the podcast. And to our listeners, we hope that that encouraged you and challenged you to just really tap into the power of generosity and just the way to be able to comp- communicate it and to inspire other people. Well, before you head off the podcast, I just want to remind you, we're just coming around the corner and the speakers conference will be here before you know it, March 21 to 23 in Clearwater Beach, Florida. An amazing lineup of speakers, Albert Tate, Mike Goodwin, April Diaz, Dr. Jason Burns, myself, some other great communicators, but we'll be pouring into each other, learning how we can become more effective, empathetic, captivating communicators, and really 
how we can communicate in such a way that we inspire our audience to lean in when we communicate. So go to thespeakersconference.com, grab your spot, there, uh, grab your hotel room, join us in beautiful Clearwater Beach, Florida. Thank you again for being a part of the podcast. We're just uh, so honored if you would uh, click the share button or leave us a review. Again, this podcast exists because words matter and healthy communication is oxygen for your relationships and leadership. So we just hope this was a challenge and an encouragement for you to choose and to practice healthy communication in your daily lives. We'll see you next week. Thanks for being a part of the Speak With People podcast.